Hello everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw, and Metagross is hitting Pokemon Unite very, very soon. Here is everything you need to know about the newest all-rounder coming to AOS Island. First, I want to take a quick second to mention that Metagross was buffed from when it was on the public test server to when it will be hitting the game, which I think is great. I don't know if you saw my video talking about Metagross, but I thought it was pretty meh to gross. And hopefully this will make it a little more meta gross. You get it? Like in the meta and then meh. All right, enough of that joke. Well, not enough of that joke. I'll probably say it a million times. All right, on to the video. Metagross is an attack-based all-rounder that fights at melee range. Its difficulty is intermediate and it evolves two times to hit its final form, Metagross. To me, Metagross feels like a very brawl-heavy all-rounder with some really cool abilities that gives it impressive amounts of shielding and it reduces the amount of crowd control that Metagross has to deal with in a fight. So it really is one of those Pokemon Pokemon that I think could feel a lot like Gudra in some ways, where it's inside of a fight for a very, very long time. It's really difficult to deal with, and at the same time, it could do a great job of getting to some of the squishy Pokemon on the enemy team. Let's start with its moves and attacks. Metagross's basic attack is a boost at every third attack, striking with an increased area of attack so you can hit multiple Pokemon. It is also going to reduce the cooldown of Meteor Mash or Gyro Ball when you use its boosted attack. Another interesting thing about about this, if you hit two or more Pokemon with this boosted attack, the moves cooldowns will be reduced even further. This is going to give you even more reason to be fighting multiple enemies at once and really be up in the mix. Metagross also has a really interesting passive that really feels like it lines up with fighting multiple enemies at once. You reduce the amount of hindrance effects on Metagross when Pokemon from the opposing team are nearby. The more Pokemon from the opposing team, the more the duration of hindrance is reduced. So Metagross is really set up to fight tons of enemies at once. Now, I don't know if this means Metagross is gonna be the kind of Pokemon that could run pink emblems. This might be one of the first Pokemon that actually can take that and turn it into a a huge, huge benefit. We will have to see once you get it inside of a game, but even without that, this just means that Metagross is going to do better in some of the crazier fights inside the game. And I'm sure as you know, a lot of the bigger fights decide what happens inside of a match. Your first two moves are pretty basic. You have Tackle, which is essentially your early dash move that deals a little damage. You'll charge toward an opposing Pokemon and deal damage to it if you hit them with Tackle. And then you have Iron Defense. You grant yourself a shield and your next basic attack becomes boosted. Really, really simple stuff. You evolve from Beldum to Matang at level five, and then you evolve once again at level nine. You get a second move at level seven, your Unite move at nine. Meaning this is one of those Pokemon with a very, very long way to go to get all of your kit. To really become strong, this Pokemon's going to need to hit level nine, and that does take a while. This is one of the tough things about Pokemon like this. They can be very, very experience hungry, and because of that, they can get shut down a little bit early. At level five, you get to choose between Meteor Mash or Gyro Ball. Both of these moves are actually really cool, and Gyro Ball got a nice buff to its cooldown from the PTS, which I think might actually end up making it the call. Meteor Mash, on the other hand is a very, very powerful move. So let's talk a little bit about both of them. When you first cast Meteor Mash, you deal damage to opponents in front of you in sort of a rectangle area. The more times this move hits, the more shields it will give you and the more damage your next attack will do. And your next attack hits like a truck or, or two trucks or a cyber truck. Do those hit like a lot? It hits like a cyber truck. It's not too hard to be able to get the full value out of this move by hitting your opponents eight times, granting yourself a huge shield and then unleashing a massive wave of damage. It's honestly, it's extremely strong and extremely fun. If it wasn't for the fact that it had a massive cooldown, it might definitely be the call. And it still might be once it hits the main game. It's very powerful. Not only does this give you a shield, which a lot of what Metagross does gives you shields, also its upgraded version is going to restore HP based off a percentage of your max HP. This could be a great reason to use something like a stacking item on Metagross to give yourself even more HP and survivability 
in some of these big fights. Your next option is Gyro Ball. And I have to say, the thing I love about Gyro Ball is how easy it is to move inside of combat and use it and how well it combos with some of your other moves as well. So I think it's a really cool option for this Pokemon. And I love that they lowered the cooldown of it. All of Metagross's cooldowns were absurdly long on the public test server. Gyro Ball has a two second cooldown reduction, which is massive. Sort of similar to Leafeon, you get an effect when this move hits an opposing Pokemon in the outer edge of your spin. You get a shield. If it hits multiple wild or opposing Pokemon, the shield becomes stronger. Again, Metagross is up in the mix. It is messing with the enemies. It is getting in there and it is fighting. And this could give you a really big shield. Also, the power of this move has been increased. So I'm very interested to see what this looks like once it hits the game. The upgrade for this move is also very cool. If the shield effect remains for a set amount of time, so basically if it remains, you have your shield and the enemies don't take it down, you get 30% of that shield as recovered HP. One of my favorite things about Gyro Ball is it can be used during Magnet Rise before you lower to the ground. We'll talk a little bit about Magnet Rise here in a second, but this combo is extremely fun and will set up some really good opportunities to hit multiple enemies with Gyro Ball. At level seven, your move options are Zen, Headbutt, and Magnet Ride. Zen Headbutt is really interesting and I think could be really powerful. Something I said in my previous Metagross video is that I was surprised with how not powerful this move felt given that you needed to hit an opponent with it directly. It's a skill shot that you need to aim and you need to hit an opponent. If you do, you fire a psychic wave out, you hit them and then you charge to that opponent, you deal damage and you, as the game calls it, throw them, which is knocking them up into the air, basically stopping them from doing what they're doing and essentially stunning them there for a moment. You're, they're not actually stunned when they land, but I'm just saying that's essentially what a knock up is in this game. The upgrade to this move reduces damage taken from opposing Pokemon for a short time after you deal damage. I think this move actually could be really, really powerful, and it did get a buff from what I understand from the public test server, which is nice. The only thing that's weird about it is inside of a game where you have so many Pokemon that have sure hit moves that are really easy to use, you now have this skill shot move that's a little narrow and a little tough to pull off, and it doesn't feel that beneficial to be fair. However, the time that Pokemon are thrown into the air was buffed from the PTS, so this could be a really nice move to start some engagements against your enemy. Your other move option is Magnet Rise. Magnet Rise definitely felt like the safer choice between these two moves. However, Magnet Rise seems to have gotten a little bit of a nerf. Let's talk about it. You levitate for a set amount of time using electrically generated magnetism. You increase your move speed. It used to be 80%, now it's 60 for four seconds, and it diminishes 15% every half second. If you perform a basic attack, you fall to the ground forcefully, and you deal damage to nearby Pokemon, and you throw them up into the air for 0.6 seconds. So it has a smaller throw now than Zen Headbutt and the move speed is not as great. I actually really liked Magnet Rise, but it felt kind of like play rough from a Pokemon like Azumarill where you got some benefit out of it, but you just wish it was more impactful. In fact, I wish both of Metagross's sort of second moves here felt a little more impactful. But moving into the main game with multiple buffs to this Pokemon, it could be really, really good. The upgrade to this move while levitating, you received reduced damage from opposing Pokemon by 30%, which is nothing to sneeze at. And as I often say, stop sneezing at things. It doesn't just stop. Magnet Rise's ability to reposition yourself inside of a fight, make your way to opposing Pokemon, and then knock them up into the air felt really like the way to go when I was playing. Again, I'll have to see the upgraded Zen Headbutt, and I'll have to see what Magnet Rise feels like now that it's been toned down a little bit. However, from the PTS, this was definitely the second move of choice. Now let's talk about your Unite move, Compute and Crush. This is a really interesting move. So it acts differently whether you're around two or fewer enemy Pokemon or three or more. And this, again, really leans into this idea that you wanna be brawling with this thing in some of the big fights. In fact, back capping with Metagross near the end of the game might be one of the worst things you could possibly do because this Pokemon is all set up around fighting the entire enemy team. 
So when it's two or fewer opponents, you lunge towards the opposing Pokemon with the lowest HP, you deal some damage, and you throw it into the air for 0.8 seconds. Another move that kind of knocks them up into the air. If you end up knocking out a Pokemon with this move, you recover a portion of your Unite move gauge, which is pretty cool. However, I noticed it didn't feel like it was doing a ton of damage, so it would be kind of hard to knock something out. However, if you happen to catch someone who's very, very low HP, and you dash at them and do a quick KO, then you'll get some Unite move gauge back. If there are three or more Pokemon around you, you still lunge towards the one with the lowest HP, but now you deal damage to Pokemon and you create this awesome wall around the enemy Pokemon, which is... I mean, it could set up some of the coolest plays inside the game. This is going to create a pit that the enemies are forced to fight into if they don't have a way to dash out. I think one of the most unfortunate parts about this for me is that there are easy ways to get out of this. Eject buttons, dashes, things like that. I would love it if you couldn't get out of Metagross's pit right here and it just created this area that people needed to fight in. However, that would probably be too powerful. But I mean, let's think about the possibilities here. You set this pit up and then a Delphox uses its Unite move or Gardevoir uses its Unite move to just rain insane amounts of damage into this area that Metagross has created. One thing to notice is Metagross is also, you know, set up right in there with the enemies. So you're in a position to get taken down as well. But this is going to create some really cool moments inside the game. This Unite move, of course, gives you a natural max HP shield, some move speed increase, and some cooldown reduction as well. So it's going to be a nice little bonus for you when you do decide to move in and fight. And this really does feel like one of those big like, hey team, we're fighting right here. Yeah in the pit I created. If you made it to this point in the video, I would love to hear from you what combinations of this Unite move and another move would be amazing. My first thought, of course, were those two Unites, and then I thought, oh man, what if you use this move and then Sand Tomb Tyranitar just jumps right into the pit? I mean, the shifting sands, let's go. But I would love to hear from you in the comments what you think is gonna be a really powerful combination with this Unite. Let's talk a little bit about emblems, items, and all of that kind of stuff for Metagross. So as far as held items are concerned, any Pokemon like this could probably benefit from stacking, either stacking an attack weight or stacking HP with an Aos cookie. It's really hard to not get value as a Pokemon like this. Even double stacking could be appropriate. Weakness policy feels like a bit of a no-brainer choice in a lot of senses because you're going to be in the fight a lot. This item will essentially always be at max when you're fighting your opponents but there are so many good options in the game right now. And it's one of the coolest things about all-rounders. And it's one of the coolest things about having so many new items coming to the game as well. I think Resonant Guard feels like a perfect combination with what you're already doing. You're already providing yourself shields. Now you're giving yourself an even bigger one and one to allies. It's just gonna make it really difficult for enemies to deal with you. Of course, there are lots of other items that could be great too. Things like Focus Band, things like Muscle Band could be excellent items. Razor Claw could be very, very good on a Pokemon like this. It's all gonna depend on what you want to prioritize most. This Pokemon feels like a bit of a late game monster to me, and I think because of that, you're probably going to spend your time working with items that either stack or items that just work very, very well in some of the big team fights. Again, I think stacking is probably going to be a huge, huge play style for this Pokemon. I don't often think you're gonna see this thing in the central area. You'll probably play it in lane, even though it needs a ton of experience. And because of that, I think you're gonna look for opportunities to stack up and get more and more powerful. This is most likely going to be a Pokemon that's going to run the classic six brown, six white setup. You might lean a little more into HP or a little more into attack, depending on how it all shakes out once we know the exact values of this Pokemon. But many Pokemon like this benefit greatly from a setup like this because you're influencing its two major stats. HP, which lets you survive in a fight regardless of what kind of damage is hitting you. And of course, attack stat, which is your determining factor with so many of your moves and basic attacks. When a Pokemon uses all attack stat and HP, it is often the best. I can't right away recommend a pink emblem setup, but there's no question I'm going to try pink emblems on this Pokemon. This might be one of the first Pokemon that it kind of makes it 
just silly the uh, amount of crowd control you are able to resist because of this. So your passive clear body, as we talked about earlier, is going to reduce hindrance effects. It's by 10% per enemy Pokemon is around you, max five opponents. So that's 50%. If you could, you know, stack on top of that the additional hindrance resistance from pink emblems it could be a really really cool setup again it's probably super cheesy it's probably better to have attack and hp but at the same time there's no question that i want to try a pink emblem setup on this pokemon for battle items i think it's really at the point in pokemon unite where it's highly up to personal preference i could see some people finding value in things like eject button even things like slow smoke or potion i could also see people who just want to run full heal and fight inside of a battle so i really think think battle items are very much a personal choice at this point. There aren't any that are so good or so necessary outside of a few instances that you just simply can't run them. Let me know if you're excited for Metagross. I hope you enjoyed this guide. I love you all very much and I will see you all very soon. Metagross. Metagross.